she was like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, I'm selling feet pics. She was like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, mom, I just take pics of my feet and sell them for like $50. She was shook. Hi, I'm Michaela. I'm 25. I live in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I create content on YouTube and I'm also an OnlyFans creator. Hello, my name is Chase. I am also an OnlyFans creator and I started through TikTok, got a big following, and then that's why I went over to OnlyFans and Instagram and stuff like that. Hi, I'm Mika. I'm from Las Vegas. I started doing OnlyFans kind of last March when I made a viral porno on Pornhub with my boyfriend about COVID to spread awareness. Hi, my name is Zamara. I am 24 years old. I have been in sex work for five years. So I started OnlyFans a year ago, last February 2020, and it's been a success ever since. Hi everyone, my name is Myra, AKA Mava. I'm an OnlyFans content creator. My promotion everything is mostly based off of Twitter and I have a regular nine to five as well. Hey guys, my name is Asher, I'm 26. I actually started OnlyFans at the beginning of the pandemic and ever since that's been what I've been relying on. The government's failing us and I needed my money. Influencers and celebrities have ruined OnlyFans. Let's start with Michaela. I said somewhat agree. Chase? Somewhat disagree. Mika? Disagree. Zamara? Strongly agree. Myra? Somewhat agree. Asher? Somewhat disagree. I truly feel like celebrities have completely taken away the opportunity of small content creators basically relying on a platform that they depend on for their whole income. I feel like celebrities you know, already have the upper hand with being, having a title of being rich, having a title of having money, and their are like their own like ego of being a celebrity. But to some of us, this is our lifestyle. This is something that we depend on. This is something that we use every single day working full time to meet and reach our goals. There's like both pros and cons. That's why I said somewhat disagree because I understand your point of view, but then I also seen that like, they're bringing more notice to the platform so they're bringing a lot more people to OnlyFans because when I first started two years ago, there was not a lot of audience on OnlyFans and not a lot of people knew what it was. And a lot of people thought it was like terrible. Celebrities cause temporary hiccups and issues. So, you know, when we have those issues like Bella Thorne and other celebrities just creating these profiles intending that, you know, we're basically want to bait and switch these people. It, it causes a temporary problem because you have that influx of people coming in now just to see that one person. So once a new person comes on or a new celebrity comes on, it's like, yeah, now don't forget about OnlyFans because, you know, once you don't feel like paying $50 a month for, you know, Trey Song's <laughs> you'll go pay for your $5, you know, a month OnlyFans person. And that's when we start bringing it in. So yeah, definitely with the awareness, because honestly with sex work, almost any promotion is good promotion. A lot of the stories that we hear from celebrities on OnlyFans tend to be about scams or things that take away our credibility as creators on OnlyFans. So then when people hear that we might be doing OnlyFans, they only think about those scandals and assume, oh, so you're just scamming people for money or something. And it's like, no, there are actually like really authentic ways that we can build an audience and earn income from it. Like if you want to make money on this and you have your audience, like go for it, but do it correctly. Like don't take advantage of people. Don't lie about what you're selling. Like do it right. I make a lot of money. Michaela? I said strongly agree. Chase? I said somewhat agree. Mika? Agree. Zamara? Strongly agree. Myra? Somewhat disagree. Asher? Agree. I do this for fun, and that being said, I make more than enough than I could ever imagine. And I'm on track to retire in the next five years. So that's that's all I could ever want. Yeah, I wanted to bring up that OnlyFans is only one of my 14 streams of revenue right now. And I want to make sure that if something happens to one of my streams of revenue, that I'm going to be okay, which is why I try so hard to have so many. That's kind of why I love OnlyFans, because it does allow that financial freedom to take a big portion of income and be able to uh, 
use that to help further your future, whether you're investing into a project, um, property, or even just like the stock market, it kind of allows us to push ourselves into the next step in our later years in life and really look out for each other, which I really like. I put strongly agree because I've never had money like this in my life as a 24 year old woman. I was making like 16 an hour at Trader Joe's a year ago and I have made over like, I mean six figures, but like a lot of six figures. And I just don't know any other field of work that would pay me that type of money. You gotta be patient with yourself. I think with stuff like this, it takes a lot of time, patience and consistency and it, you're just not gonna mm -hmm. make an OnlyFans post a vote video a video or a photo of yourself and make six figures. It just doesn't work like that. It's taken me mm -hmm. five long, hard working years to say that like I have the things that I do and I work hard for them. That's why I think uh, with OnlyFans or just working online in general and for yourself, the cap is off. You can make as much as you want to make if you really try and you put in the strides and the efforts to make that much money. A lot of people ask me if they should do OnlyFans and I'm like, it's really relative to you. Like, let's say you have a hundred followers on Instagram and that's all you have you probably won't make much money because OnlyFans doesn't really promote you that much. Like you mainly get promotion from your other websites and your other socials or other whatever you do. So like, it depends on if you think you could get your followers following you to actually follow you and actually like pay money for your content. Then you can make a lot of money. You just can't expect things to happen out from nothing. And I think that's a big misconception when it comes to OnlyFans. Everybody thinks that we basically like sit on our ass all day and don't do anything. Like we're editing videos, we're editing photos, we're picking out times to drop this video and that. And you know, those things take time. Even with my nine to five, it's like, I have to work an eight hour shift and then go beat my face and get ready and put on lingerie to take pictures and sweat. We don't talk enough about the work that goes into it. Everybody just knows the benefits. And that's the, that's, you know, that's where we get up. <laughs> My family knows that I'm an OnlyFans creator. Michaela? I chose agree. Chase? I chose strongly agree. Mika? Strongly agree. Zamara? Strongly agree. Myra? Strongly agree. Asher? Agree. I first told my mom one day when we were actually at the lake and I was taking feet pics. And she was like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, I'm selling feet pics. And she was like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, mom, I just take pics of my feet and sell them for like $50. She was shook. As for my grandparents, um, they always ask me if I found a job yet because I told them I lost my job at the beginning of the pandemic. And I'm like, don't worry about me, I got you. They would have a heart attack, I think. <laughs> One of my cousins, sent a text to my brother after probably seeing a YouTube video and told him like, your sister's doing porn. And then he showed that to my mom and she kind of confronted me about it. And you know, I kind of had to like talk them off the ledge of being like, okay, well, let's define porn here and telling them exactly, not exactly, but kind of explaining how I was earning money, what I was posting and my limits, because you know, I think we all have boundaries with ourselves as to what we post or what we choose not to share on that platform. and. A big misconception, I think, when people hear that you do, do OnlyFans is that you automatically might post X, Y, and Z when maybe you only post X and Y, but not Z and etc. I initially out just outwardly told my mom, but I waited until I made over a thousand dollars on OnlyFans so I can justify me doing this bullshit. However, um, my father found out by <laughs> he saw me on Pornhub. <laughs> when I finally moved from Virginia to Philadelphia, my dad came and helped me move out and we basically had the heart to heart. And he was like, you know, I was doing the same you were doing in the 90s with a camcorder. So be safe. <laughs> you know, I love you. And he was like, and you get it honest. And he was like, but I know anything that you do, you do it exceptionally well. I basically had the same experience as Myra with her mom. I just told my parents what I was doing because I had to tell them somehow because I was making this money. They could see my bank account at the time because I was like connected through theirs. And they actually found it very like humorous and interesting, but they were very worried it may affect because my mom at that point still wanted me to go to med school because she's in the medical field. But then once I talked to her about how I want to take the path of social media and not go to school right now, or at least take a break from school, she was kind of uh, on the fence about that and very uh, worried like, because 
they're they're pretty old so like they're not like aware that you can make money in so many different ways nowadays so it took her a while and it took both of them a while to wrap their head around it but once they came around they were actually very supportive i'm paranoid about protecting my privacy Michaela, what answer did you choose i said strongly agree chase i put somewhat agree mika somewhat agree Zamara? Disagree. Myra? Somewhat disagree. Asher? Somewhat agree. So the first thing I remember is someone hacked my Snapchat and found my cell phone number, my email address, and a ton of private photos, not necessarily explicit, just like my personal life on there. Then I occasionally, unfortunately, get people commenting my address on my YouTube videos, just I got this one like in the middle of the night from this troll being like, wow, like, do you live here with my full home address where my parents and family live? I've learned a lot through this last year to uh, try to become even more private with my information because unfortunately, you know, it's just so public online. It's been really tricky and I've like even started therapy again this year because my anxiety has become so high with every notification that I get on my phone. So it just sucks that there are people out there not really looking out for anyone's good intentions and taking advantage of people's platforms or their privacy. I just had a lot of experiences this year with that. Not during sex work. Before I started sex work, I had a stalker, which kind of made me question whether or not this is like a good line to go into because of how public everything is. I mean, I'm in a super secure neighborhood. I'm in like we have a gun, I can protect myself if I need to. My boyfriend's a great shot too. But there's always like, in my mind and like, well, worst case, something could happen. I think I'm more worried for my family than I am for myself though. I go under a stage name, I, I just keep my privacy private. I am insecure about my body. Let's start with Michaela. Disagree. Chase? Somewhat agree. Mika? Disagree. Zamara? Somewhat agree. Myra? Disagree. Asher? Somewhat disagree. I feel like personally, well, I've been diagnosed with like body dysmorphia, so that may make me biased about this prompt. When I first went to college, I lived in the dorms, and so we got, we got the meal plan, and I would go to like the cafeteria to get the foods and I would just like couldn't eat not because the food didn't look good like obviously it was school food so it's still kind of <laughs> but like I would like not eat for the fact that I wanted to keep my abs I wanted to keep this keep this this and that and I would like tell myself and like talk to my parents when they saw me like look in the mirror and like talk about these things they'd be like what is wrong with you and like my, I said my mom's in the medical field so she brought me into the actual office so it was like a special type of body dysmorphia like a muscular dysmorphia like I never feel like I'm muscular enough or lean enough so it's like i don't feel i'm as defined as i always should be even though on from their point of view they're like you're crazy like you look fuck you look fine like two almost three years ago i was diagnosed with uh anorexia nervosa i had a severe eating disorder um it started in the strip club um that i worked in like 2018 2017 i think the pressure from seeing other people go on stage and you know, make more money than me, having different body types than me, it really made me feel insecure about myself. So I kind of had to take a step back from that and really like take a break from that. I have to take care of myself, do what makes me happy and love myself because I do believe like being hard on yourself really does reflect your content and show in your content, you know, the work you do put out. And I just think that's one important note to always remember is to love yourself and you come first and you know, health is wealth, truly. And I love that. And that's definitely what you have to realize. But I know especially like it exemplifies like the hardness you put on yourself because you're on stage. Like this is your job. This is everyone's looking at you, you know, and I'm glad you shared that. Thank you. Of course. I have, of course, spent years of not loving myself. I've been fat um, and black. So it's really hard as a fat black woman to make your way in the sex industry without being completely fetishized, completely demoralized and demeaned, to be completely honest. I pride myself in like not, you know, entertaining that. Like I would never call myself a cow. You wouldn't hear me saying that I'm about to get bread. None of that. I feel like the sex work industry has really helped me develop, you know, 
for sure self-confidence where now when I walk on the street, I feel like I can bag any man that I want. Of course, we all have our days where we feel like we're just not up to par, but more often than not, I feel good about myself. I love myself and I like showing the world myself. So that's, that's my opinion on it. What's awesome about OnlyFans too is that there are so many different accounts and varieties of like shapes and sizes and kinks and what people are into. So your body or like whoever you are on there, like your brand might be somebody's like perfect type. And yet someone that you feel insecure compared to might not be what they're into. So there's just like this almost infinite platform of audiences where it's like you are somebody's perfect type, even if you don't look like someone that you wish you looked like. Yeah, I really think uh, Michaela nailed it on the head. Someone is going to be into what you post. Like, no matter the kink, no matter what it is, they're not gonna see the same flaws that you see. They're gonna be horny, let's go. <laughs> I would rather have another job. Michaela? Strongly disagree. Chase? Disagree. Mika? Strongly disagree. Zamara? Disagree. Myra? Disagree. Asher. Some would agree. I did the whole book by the book type of like career path. I went to college. I got a bachelor's in communication and I felt like I was following something that I knew that wasn't for me. I feel like being into sex work now and like fully like making it my full time job has like helped me fall into who I am more and build like my confidence more. I feel like it's just something I'm so comfortable with, especially with the fact of like how much money that you know that you can make on something like this. If anything, with the money that I do make now, I just want to invest in myself and build my own company and continue to grow that way and just be always under my own like name, my own boss, my own title. I never see myself working under anyone ever again in my life. <laughs> like that's not something I want to do. That's something I've learned from OnlyFans. But I would love to branch out from OnlyFans and be doing other things in music or anything like that. I think it would be really cool to have like like Madonna has, like she has the sex book. And like later down the lines, it's like, oh yeah, go look back at Asher's sex book. <laughs> I am not a full-time sex worker. I have a full-time nine to five job. OnlyFans has really given me the freedom to, you know, live the life I want to live. I'm happy doing things that I'm doing. However, it would be really foolish of me as I am to, you know, get rid of my job because this is my legitimacy. And, you know, I, I never, I don't have jobs that would really, I'm not the spokesperson for that company. So it doesn't matter if I am sucking on the internet. They don't care. They're not looking for Myra. You know, nobody's Googling me and be like, oh, you're the one that helped me. I did not do the whole college thing. I, I got some college credits under my belt if I really want to ever go back. But even just the one year of doing school, it accumulated so much debt, which thanks to OnlyFans, I've paid off. Uh, my boyfriend and I just got a Tesla. We're planning on doing road trips, camping in the Tesla, going around filming content in it. And I would never be able to do that with just a basic nine to five. I think if I wasn't doing sex work, I would probably still just be like a stay at home girlfriend cleaning, cooking. <laughs> That's the life. <laughs> you don't necessarily have to be sucking on OnlyFans. You can bake a cake on OnlyFans. Like it's, it's what you make it. And, you know, just being a content creator in this day and age, it's really a blessing that OnlyFans is here because it's actually been a lifeboat for millions of people in this pandemic. If you want to be real, there's no way, like, I, I've never heard of anything like this, you know, where people have been put in such a situation where our own government is not helping us and we are all hustlers at, you know, at one time. I think, yeah, I think these conversations are really important to erase the stigma around sex work and to normalize sex in general. Also, I'm so thankful for OnlyFans allowing us to express ourselves sexually while Instagram or TikTok or anything like that is constantly shutting down and censoring voices of LGBT or, or anything of that sort. And I think it's also important to, for us as a community of creators or anything to stand against the internet regulations that people or the government is going to put on the internet and things like that. It was good to meet you. Thank you. It was great. Guys.